With the new tax laws, you can be subject to higher tax rates, the new Medicare tax, phase out of deductions, and multiple tax landmines. In this video, Bill talks about the dangers to the unemployed. So the question now is what to do uh, for the clients where arguably the estate planning of the tax issues off the table. Um, this is some general ideas, obviously. Uh, we still have to deal with the desired distribution. Uh, we still have to deal with probate avoidance, those issues related to that. Uh, privacy, we have to deal with uh, who will they be naming as decision makers, uh, tax avoidance in general. We're going to talk largely about income taxes here in a little while. Um, and uh, leveraging exemptions, that also means we're maybe dealing with some, some interfamily uh, structures. Uh, asset protection, of course, is going to be key. Um, as we learn more about who pries and whose business and how things are being done and who can get at people's assets, it strikes me that this is going to be a, a, a very sensitive spot for an awful lot of people. They're going to want to learn more about what they can do to uh, protect their assets uh, both against prying eyes as well as other people getting their assets either from them or from the people to whom they wish to give it to. Uh, generation skipping is still very much uh, a strategy. We're going to talk about something related to that, uh, retaining financial benefits and control for family members. Um, we mentioned uh, a moment ago that uh, we're going to be looking a lot at income taxes. So there still are opportunities for charitable trust planning. Um, uh, I think principally uh, you can look right now at the charitable lead trust, especially now in a very low interest rate environment. People who are charitably inclined and want to receive these resources back and keep those assets protected. There are good, good opportunities there. Uh, charitable major trust may be a little less so because the interest rate environment is still low enough that they're not getting maybe the deduction they want to get. But that will change here as interest rates uh, begin to pop up. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, partially taxed single premium annuities and uh, so-called SPIAs here in a little while talk about why we might be using them in an income tax world while escaping the taxation on certain things. What or more can I do to escape taxes? Uh, we have to do with this. And talk, you know, we're going to also talk about community property trusts under Alaska law. And those community property trusts under Alaska law, I think it's kind of a huge opportunity that are not being at all used by uh, people who can use them. We'll talk about how and when we can use those strategies. So it's a way to provide a step up in basis at the first spousal death for um, somebody who is, um, uh, in the case of a married couple. This is just a, uh, I, I didn't know the plug there. That should be later in the, should be later in the program. Um, what to do now, for, again, for the client uh, that has a less than um, $5.25 million per person, or perhaps if we double this for a married couple. Income shifting through family entities. Big deal. It's always been a big deal, but it's a bigger deal now because now all of a sudden income taxes have gone up to such a level. And remember this whole AGI? There's going to be years in which we want to be able to shift income, if we can, to it among family members. To be about the right situation, the right amount of income, the right everything, the right position. But if and when they decide to do that, this is going to be uh, a big opportunity. I mentioned a while ago installment sales of real estate and business assets or entities. Uh, I was stopped recently by an acquaintance who began talking about uh, selling a property that he's owned for a long period of time, the District of Columbia. He talked about how he bought the property for a fairly low price, uh, maybe fifty or $75,000 range. It's now worth uh, maybe $500,000 more than that, and he has depreciated it down to virtually nothing. And the question I was asking, he's a, a man in his uh, late mid 60s, he has no children, uh, he just was tired of managing, just didn't want to have it. And he started talking about what he could do, and I said, well, what do you plan to do with the money? He said, I don't know, I, I guess invest, put it in a certificate of deposit, put it in a uh, wherever, put it in an account. And he conservatively, he's very concerned about losing money. Well, if this is a property he's owned all those years, and he's happily received, a sufficient amount of down payment, he can, of course, be the bank for that particular purchaser. And if that's the case, instead of getting, um, remember, he's single, his AGI would certainly be uh, above the threshold amounts. He, would, he lives in the District of Columbia. That's a 9% uh, state-to-state tax environment. Uh, he's going to be at the 
at the highest level for capital gains purposes, plus we're into the 3.8% surcharge, he's at a 33% tax. So he'd be giving away uh, $200,000 almost in taxes and not earning income on the 200000 whereas if he received some money by a down payment, by a down payment, then he could be the bank for, let's say, $500,000 at an inter interest rate that is commensurate with what banks are charging, perhaps, 3.5%, 4%, perhaps, a little more, maybe less, for the interest, and he's getting on, on all the money, plus he still has the money coming to him. Now, certainly, as there becomes principal pay downs, he is going to have to then suffer his capital gains, but it begins to then be spread out. He's never going to be in a year where his AGI is now going to be in these upper ranges. And the consequence of that is this is a really important place. And so we have to get the people sooner than later. It's not the people that call us on the phone and say, what do I do now that I've sold the beachfront property? You know, it's like, uh, okay. It's a little late to be talking about that at this stage. But all of these structures and strategies do. I also think it's giving incredibly new life to any life insurance policy that has cash value. In the past, these have been viewed as maybe more conservative investments. People have wanted to do more and better things. So you have to begin to now look at the after-tax returns. If I can access cash from a life insurance policy and be able to get that cash out for um, at, uh, at no income at all, I can borrow the money back. And we'll talk about some structures how to do that in a little while. All of a sudden, that be begins to become a far more interesting prospect then even a very high rate of return at which my tax marginal rate can be as high. If it's ordinary income, it'd be like these people putting money in uh, hedge funds. You know, all of a sudden I'm in a I'm in a marginal income tax rate of 39.6 percent. Then I get my state rate kicked in. All of a sudden I'm at a almost a 50 percent total rate in Maryland, in D.C. In California's even more than that. Even in Virginia, we're we're at a really high tax rate on the margin. So where I have no tax assessed and I can access resources, so. That's a place you do that. And then, okay, how okay, then how would I do this and still protect it? I can do that with an accessible with an accessible grantor retirement trust. I Meaning I can put these assets into a trust where I can either access this through the utility of a trustee, uh, I can do that in a number of different ways, uh, or um, I can uh, have it uh, set up where uh, my spouse, if I'm married, can also be the person that can access these cash values. We'll talk about these strategies in a little while. Um, remove and reduce IRAs for k assets from the estate. Uh, people often startle when I say, this is your worst asset. This is the one you want the least of. Certainly if I was make, getting a choice, if I had two children, and one was going to inherit my IRA, and one was going to get cash, uh, the one that raised their hand the fastest and said, please give me the cash is the one that's getting the better asset. I mean, all these assets are like ticking time bombs. I mean, I've got them, and maybe I can stretch the income out over a period of time. Uh, for some assets, I can't. Uh, some strategies, I can't do that. And all of a sudden, all those assets that I've been deferring the income on for all those years, all of a sudden, are, vis are visited on my beneficiary. It's a terrible thing to own unless I don't have a choice. It's wonderful to retire on, that sounds great. But if I'm going to pass it on, move it on, uh, or give it on to somebody else, I want to be able to consider to do something else with that. Um, and I can do that, and we're going to talk about strategies to do this. We're going to talk about, if in circumstances where I'm afraid I can't do that, or I can't make those changes, we're going to talk about setting up special types of trusts, for retirement assets uh, in IRA stretch, and we're going to also talk about potentially, or you, you would certainly be studying, we're not going to really touch on this today, uh, IRA conversions. Uh, these are increased adaptive client service, elder law issues, legacy planning, expanded conversation with clients about how they can pass financial and non-financial wealth opportunities. I did mention a moment ago the endangered species. Uh, the Obama plans to make uh, certain strategies endangered. Uh, grantor trusts are, going, are on the endangered species. You might be able to do something with ones that are there. They won't ban those, that new contributions to them, new sales to them, new gifts to them, all of a sudden is a problem. Uh, discounts are still wise on business interest for transfers of money, more, more, minority interest, excuse me. But those are things that are definitely on the undiagnosed endangered species. Here. I mentioned that grats are on the attack list, 10 year minimum grats, we've been hearing about this for a long time, and where we have a 90 year limit on GST planning and di dynasty trusts today are still possible. So making gifts early and often. Uh, for those that can, it still makes sense. This is a biggie. Money loan for property 
sold for installment notes within, I just happen to have the three to nine year term. Uh, it could be clearly the longer term or the shorter term. But the three to nine year term, I have an old uh, date in here, but these aren't that much different right now. Uh, you can loan interfamily for uh, about 1%, about right now maybe 1.4%, something like that, interfamily loans. Really important way to make money to, and of course, uh, so it's an ideal time for interfamily loans. Uh, we have also business tax extensions and opportunities. We have the reduction as corporate. If you have clients out there that have C corporations, it's now time to convert these to S, right? Um, if and when they can. Before they, you had a 10 year time frame you had to kind of get through. That has now been reduced to five years. And five years as time goes by, all of a sudden someone looks up four and a half years from now and says, gee, I could have done that five years ago. Well, I mean, these times go by. And uh, having double taxation makes no sense, especially no sense, in a current tax environment. Um, and we still have IMT preferences rules still available. Yeah. Any questions? Now, you're going to talk about that last week. Oh, that's a great. Yes, at the, at the end.